So in this video, I will demonstrate and discuss the best one light portrait photography setup for beginner photographers. And did I mention also one of the cheapest? So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you can also find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And for you guys who are new to the channel, this small home studio is just about 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. I do a lot of my tutorials here just to demonstrate that you don't really need such a big space. All you need to know is light control. So in today's video, I will be discussing the best or maybe even the cheapest one light portrait photography setup for beginner photographers. So before I discuss the lighting system, let's talk about the backdrop. The backdrop that I'm using is my five foot by seven foot hand painted backdrop from Kate Backdrop. However, you don't really need to use a backdrop like this. However, if you can afford to buy one, then it's actually a very, very good investment. If you want to know more about it, I'll put the link in the description below. But any white wall or any wall in your home will actually work or you could put any backdrop that you want. It really depends on the vision that you want for your portrait photography. Now, the light that I'm going to be using is this one. This is my Sony F60RM. Now, I use the Sony F60RM because I am a brand ambassador of Sony and I do love using Sony flash units because they match my Sony camera really well. However, if you don't have Sony flash units or if you're using other brands, by all means, any speed light will do so long as you can remotely control or remotely trigger your flash off camera. So I'm putting it here on the MagMod MagShoe. Again, you don't really need to use the MagMod MagShoe. Any flash mount will actually work, even the more affordable one, so long as you have an option to put in an umbrella and also mount your flash. The reason why I like this MagMod though is because it is very sturdy. It keeps my flash in place because I've really dropped a lot of flashes before with those cheap um, cold shoe connectors and at the same time it's got a pistol grip so it's very easy for me to tilt the light the way I want to tilt it. Now the modifier that we will be using is this really very cheap and very portable yet beautiful light that's very very easy to use. It's just an 85cm shoot through umbrella. Now the brand that I'm using now is the Photix 85 Premium. However, I don't know if this is still available, but if it is, again, I'll put it in the link in the description. I'll put the link in the description below. But any 85 millimeter shoot through umbrella should work for this particular purpose. So why do I like the shoot through umbrellas? Well, number one, it gives you beautiful soft light. 85 cm is more than enough to give you beautiful soft light, especially if you're just doing standard portraits. And as you can see, it's very easy for you to bring around. Now, the downside with these umbrellas is that it is very difficult to control the spill of the light, especially the spill going back. So in a small home studio like this, it's essential that again, we have light control. So this premium comes with this option that actually gives you a silver backing and at the same time controls the spill of the light going back. So this is the way you put it here. Okay. All right. So you can see also here in my flash unit, I have this diffuser in front um, put down so that I have the widest. I want to be able to make, uh, to, I want to be able to maximize the size of this modifier. So all I'm gonna do is put it in here in the umbrella holder part of the MagMod Mag shoe. Okay, like that. Lock it in place and put it like that, okay? So you could see by the very nature of the light, it will give you soft light, especially if it is very close to your subject because 
soft light is dependent on the size of the subject relative uh, size of the light source relative to your subject so the closer the light is the softer it will be because the bigger it is in relation to your subject however the problem with lights like this you can see is that it just spreads all over the place so in a small home studio like this the key is learning how to be able to control the spill of the light which i will show you now after i discuss the camera that i will be using so the camera that i'm using is my sony a7r mark IV, and the lens that i chose is my 51.2 gm lens the reason why i chose the 50 millimeter is because i might not do a tight portrait but rather a half body portrait and the 50 millimeter is perfect for that and of course, you everything that you are seeing is a live view of what my act of my camera is actually seeing through the help of this one. This is my Atomos Ninja V, which is connected to my camera via HDMI, therefore recording a live source of from my camera, which means that every single image that you will be seeing now will be straight out of the camera. In other words, no absolutely no editing will be done. However, the edited image I, images I normally put at the very end of the video. Now let's go to my settings. My settings are 1 over 250 f5.6 ISO 100. The reason why I'm doing that again is to remove all existing ambient light. The light that or the scene that you're actually seeing now is basically live view turned off. In other words, because I have a TTL trigger, it is telling my camera that to turn off the live view so that I can see what I am shooting. But look what will happen the moment I turn off my trigger. That is the actual exposure. 1 over 250, 5.6 ISO 100 gives me pitch black. So the moment I turn on my flash again, you could see that it turns off live view so that I can see what I'm shooting. And by the way, the trigger that I'm using is a Sony WRC-1M and that's the one that's remotely controlling my Sony F60RM. Now, aside from all those settings, I also have my white balance set as 5600 Kelvin because my flash is rated at 5600 Kelvin. Now, in order for me to properly demonstrate how to control light, especially in a small home studio like this, using a shoot through umbrella i need the help of my wife coco who will also be my model for today babe come on in hi babe hi, and of course we'd like to thank our friend mela jimenez for virtually assisting coco put on her makeup for today and of, and of course you look fantastic babe all right so here's the key whenever you're shooting with light like this you have to understand that the closer the light is as i said earlier it will give you softer light However, the closer your light is also, the faster the fall off will be because of the inverse square law. Therefore, you are now able to control the spill of the light. If I have my light really close to her, I will be able to control the spill of the light there and wherever because I am exposing for the, for the light that is hitting her. Therefore, that light there will be about a stop or two underexposed already the moment it reaches the background. So let me show you how, what I mean. Right now, my flash is set at 1 8th power. And babe, let's do one test shot. Wait, let me bring this up now. I'll actually compose this for Instagram. Normally, I would compose it properly, but since I normally post these images on Instagram, I shoot it a bit wider, so it's easier for me to crop for four by five. Okay, babe? Very nice. So there, you can see, wait one more. Let's, let me just make sure that it, everything's level, okay? One more. There we go, babe. So you could see that my light is properly exposed on her face and the background is almost black or dark because the light that is hitting her face by the time it hits this background here. Thank you. Babe. You look fantastic, babe. It already is about one stop or 1.5 stops weaker. However, another downside of light being this close is that you get a lot of contrast. In other words, the fall off here on this side is also very drastic. Therefore, we might need something like this, like a, just an ordinary foam board 30 by 60 to be able to open up the shadows a little bit. So there, let me put it there. Just make sure that when you're putting a reflector, you understand that the light bounces in a certain direction. It's the angle of incidence. So you want the light, the light to bounce directly towards the side of the face that you want to remove the shadows from. Well, not necessarily remove, but lessen or open the shadows is what I would call it. All right, babe, same pose. 
there we go. So now it's less drastic. However, I think I'm taking out a bit too much of the shadow. So I will just move it back so that I still get that contrast that I like, making it more dramatic. Okay, very nice. You look fantastic, babe. Oh, fantastic. Look towards the light. Very nice. Tilt your head this way. I love it. I love it, babe. Put your right leg forward, sorry, right foot forward. And all these images that you're seeing is straight out of the camera and it looks fantastic already. Bring up your right hand a little bit. There. Fantastic chin up. There. Tilt your head away from camera. There. Chin up some more. Oh, beautiful, babe. All right, then look at me straight. That's how easy it is to control now the light inside a small home studio. But let's say, for example, you want less contrast in general or you want to make your background maybe a little bit brighter. So what you can do now is you can just move the light back. When you remove the, when you move the light back, you obviously have to bring it up a little bit higher. But when, when, you, when you move the light back, you are basically, again, because of the inverse square law, evening the distribution of light to your subject and to your background, evening the power of the light. So you don't get that drastic shift of light anymore. So by having it this far, Obviously, your light will become weaker if I take a shot right now. You don't need to do anything, babe. If I take a shot right now, it's going to be underexposed because we move the light further back. So now we have to make the light stronger, maybe about to one half power. And there we go. So now you're seeing that the light is actually hitting the background also at the same more or less exposure at her, as her face. Therefore, she is getting the same exposure for the background and her face. In other words, it is, uh, it's taking out a little bit of the drama and more of removing a lot of the contrast too. Can you move forward, please, babe? Um, too much, one step back. There, perfect. There you go. So if you want less control of your, of your light, just move it back, let it light up the entire scene again. With this one, we could still use this one to open up the shadows on the other side of her face. There, let's just take one shot. Okay, babe, do some poses, do some real poses. How about angling your body? So again, we're taking up too much of the shadow, so we bring it back a little bit. Perfect. Take one tiny step back, please. All right, good. Very nice. One step forward, we're getting a lot of shadow in her, in the background, which we don't want. So maybe we will move the light here a little bit, just to remove some of the shadows from there. Very nice. Good. How about facing the light, babe? There. Very nice. So basically, that's how it works. Let me move this here. This is the best one light setup for me, especially for beginner photographers, because number one, it's inexpensive, babe, excuse me, <laughs> sorry. Number one, it's inexpensive. You can actually go out to Hedy. Thank you very much, babe. So this is the best light for me when it comes to beginner photographers, especially those that want to get into portrait photography, because number one, these lights are very inexpensive or these modifiers are very inexpensive. Very, very easy to carry around. As you can see, it just fits in a container this small. Number two, it gives really, really nice soft light for the price. Now you could get bigger ones like 120 cm's. However, for a small home studio like this, it is actually a little bit too big and you want to be able to control the light a little bit more. Now the downside with lights like this is of course it just spreads the light without any form of control. You can't put any grids here. However, Photix came up with a diffuse a backing here so that at least you could control the light that's spilling in the back. And at the same time, it is also silver. So it gives you a little bit of specularity and it makes the light a little bit stronger. Now, 
as you saw in this demonstration for us to be able to control light like this we have to bring in the inverse square law which basically states that the closer the light is to the subject the faster the fall off will be now we were able to use that with a demo here to be able to remove the light that's hitting the backdrop since I wanted to remove the light that's hitting from the backdrop. Now if I wanted the light or the backdrop to be lit, all I needed to do was move my light further away because by moving the light further away, you will now have an even distribution of the power of the light to your backdrop and your subject. Okay, so again, this for me is one of those things that you have to be able to master, especially as a beginner photographer who wants to get into portrait photography before you get into the more complicated lighting setups like two or three or four or five lights. And don't forget, these foam boards, they're so cheap, they're 30 by 60 cm, it's white, it's easily replaceable, again, it is very affordable, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel and now, if you want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, I do give one-on-one -on -one online workshops, the details of which I will put in the description below. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could also follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. You could also follow Coco on Instagram. It's at Coco Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.